Hello, Scott Patton. Welcome to episode zero of Living La Vida Infopreneur. And I just want to give people a chance to get to know you a bit before we continue this infopreneurship journey together. So tell me, Scott, are you a full-time infopreneur right now? No. Okay. I would say I am a semi-retired full-time infopreneur. Okay. (laughs) Because full-time for me was what I did for 20 years working for a grocery store. I managed a grocery store and I was working 40 to 80 hours a week depending. And to me, that's a full-time to me means you're told to show up at 7 a.m. You're told to leave at 6 p.m. You work 40 or 50 or 60 hours during the day with no control. And so that's the full-time part. Of course, the infopreneur is totally different. But uh, what I've discovered is it's not really, first of all, it's not possible for me to tell you how many hours I work in a week. So I can't say I am a full-time. And I work when I want to work, which means sometimes it's two in the morning. Right. And, and I've had a hard, hard time coming to grips with the fact that Sometimes I'm most creative between 10 at night and two in the morning. And because I want to get up, I'm supposed to get up with the birds and the bees and the chickens and the, you know, the rooster crowing and everything else. And I sleep in till nine, 10, sometimes mm-hmm. 11 o'clock. And I feel guilty about it. I have to, I have to confess. Um, but I would say that if in terms of full-time based on my definition of full-time, I'm probably a half-time okay. uh, entrepreneur. And I think if I was really sneaky, I could say that, yes, I am. And I could because I don't do anything else. It's not like I have a a yoga instructor job on the side or I deliver papers or I have an office job somewhere. I don't. My income all comes from this infopreneurship thing that we do. Uh, But I think, like, my personal opinion is if your goal is to be a full-time infopreneur, you're missing the point. (laughs) Right. You know, <laughs> like I just finished taking a course, the four day work day by Jerry Banfield. And I thought, yeah, like he's hit a few points that really helped me clarify what my day is like, because it used to be if you were a ditch digger or a farmer, you know, you worked with your hands, craftsman, blacksmith, all those things. You know, you're not thinking and you can hammer for hours. Like, you know, sure, your arm's going to be sure, sore, but you're going to do it. Now, it's not like you have to think about where the nail is. But when you're an infopreneur, you're using your brain. And the problem yeah. with my yeah. brain is, is after about an hour, it says, dude, uh, like, I, you know, who are you? I don't know where I am. It just goes really weird on me. So I think what I find for my my full-time day is kind of, I work for about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour. I take half an hour to an hour off. I work 50 minutes to an hour. I might get on the phone and do, or I might get on a blab and do something like right. this. I don't call this like work, but it is. So you could, you could sort of sneak that in, but I find that it's really important to, to be gentle with yourself and understand that there's only so much you can get done in a day. Decide how much that is. And of course you've got a list that's twice as long for sure is what you can get done in a day. And then don't beat yourself up on it because you've got to balance your, you don't want to burn out your mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. You lose all your hair if you do that. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already beyond that. Got, I'm, I'm, I'm lost in, in that area. But that was a very interesting answer, actually, the way that you approach that. So you right now, your only source of income is through being an infopreneur, and yet you aren't calling yourself a full-time infopreneur. And that's actually a really cool way to think about it. I think that's kind of the the dream that everybody would like to have, is that I'm going to produce my income solely from doing this, but I'm not actually going to be working full-time. So so very interesting. Well, how long have you been working um, towards this process of being able to generate your income through infopreneur infopreneurialism, infopreneurship, um, um, uh, without actually having to work at it full time. Well, the first question I want to ask you is when did the term infopreneur come about? Because it was probably five years before then. (laughs) Cause we didn't know, right? Right. You know, I worked 20 years managing grocery stores. I had 300 employees. I had a deli manager, bakery manager, produce manager, grocery manager, night 
manager, blah, 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 blah. And of course, in 300 employees, there was always 10% who had PMS every day. And that's not to say anything about 20,000 people walking through the turnstiles every day, buying and keeping them happy. So the uh, when I decided that, when I looked at people who were 10 years older than me, they were all obese, diabetic, heart attack prone, or having nervous breakdowns. And I said, you know what? I'm no smarter than these people. This is my life in 10 years. So I look at people, particularly my good friends who are 10 years older than me, that's my life. Like there's really no reason why it's gonna be any different unless I do something right. dramatically different than what I see them do. And so what I did was I had two young children and a wife and we quit. You know, it was a family. Well, the children didn't have any say in it. But, you know, my wife and I sat down and we said, this is what we're going to do. And we failed magnificently. Right. You know, uh, <laughs> one thing that we did that was a huge success is we picked up. We were in British Columbia, Canada, and we went and we spent three months in southwestern United States around uh, Sedona, Arizona, Las Vegas, um, San Francisco, Southern California. And it was great. Like I homeschooled the one child that was my one son who was in school. Like we just got the books and just did all the work in a couple hours every day. And we and we just had a great time and hadn't had that in 20 years. Uh, then but the reason that we left turned out to be a very bad reason. And so I ended up doing something else and something else and something else. And finally, somebody said, you know what? The local phone company has gone to Windows 3.1. None of yeah. their employees know how to use Windows or send email or any of these things. They've got these courses. Can you teach them Word and blah, blah, blah. And of course, I'd known that computers were the thing, of the wave of the future. I'd taught myself how to do that. And so I got into teaching. And from there, it was, well, you can teach me how to use Word, but how about how to send an email or and then a realtor company came along and said, we need to teach people how to use our website. And they're like 50 year old people in the late 1990s had no clue how to turn on their computer. Like I remember once getting a phone call from the assistant of one of my students and at seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, I've already told you what time I like to go to bed, right? So you can imagine my mood. And uh, I answer the phone and I go like, hello. And he says, Scott, he says, my computer's broken. I go, what? He says, yeah, I got this big blue screen. I says, oh, you've got a drive in your, you've got a, fi a, a disk drive in your, in your A drive. No, no, I haven't. I didn't do that. I go, oh, okay, well, can you just, do you know where it is? Yeah. Can you push the button right beside it? Yeah. Oh, this thing popped out. Cool. Hit the uh, reset button or the on off or what? Oh, it works. Thank you very much. I went back to sleep. So yeah. th what happened with me was it was what people were asking for. I realize now. What people were asking for, like, can you make a website? No, taught myself how to do that. Well, I have a website, I have no traffic. Taught myself how to use pay-per-click and get traffic. And then what well, this email marketing thing, and then this and that, and conversions got me into copywriting because I would build these websites that were not sales websites, and people would say, nobody's buying. And then someone said, well, you've ever heard of copywriting? No, started taking the AWAI copywriting course, and I got into that. And it's just progressed. And then I got into podcasting and then I discovered Udemy because somebody said, do a video course on podcasting, Scott. Where do I put it? So I just put it on Udemy. And then I okay. realized like, oh, there's this whole new world opening up, right? So this has actually been quite a good number of years now, especially like you're saying, since the, the 1990s. So this isn't something that was like an overnight success for you here. You've been working at this, like you say, long before it was ever be called infopreneur. Um, uh, so it's been, you, you're you um, an overnight success in, in whatever that is, 15 or 20 years, <laughs> <That's> basically. <right. laughs> um, so how would you say how would you say that your journey has been so far? Like how how have you you know enjoyed it? Like it, uh, ups and downs of it. Like overall, how would you how would you rate your um, you know enjoyment level of it? Well, the first thing I can say is it's impossible for me to be employed by anybody now. So whether I enjoy it or not enjoy it. I, is it there's just there's nobody but me that's going to put up with me anymore so uh, i'm stuck with this i i what i love about it is the fact that I'm, i am a lifelong learner i love to learn things i love to interact with people i'm an introvert so 
it's kind of there's that weird kind of dichotomy between like after a certain period of time with people like I need to go out in the woods for 10 or 20 minutes but because I love to learn now I'm working with like part of my job is building my career is building websites right so I have some local ones I have some international clients I don't have, you know I, I don't I got up in front of a group one mark about 200 people and I said how many clients do you need and you know 10,000 was shouted out a million I you know I said seven if I have seven good clients I'm happy because I have everything covered that I want and everything growing towards what I want in the future and I have all the time in the world to do the other things that I want to do that aren't client-based stuff like Udemy courses or ebooks or a trainings or whatever it is that I want other information type products right and uh, and I think that that's a real issue that people have it's kind of like how many well if you've got a product on Amazon you want millions right if you're dealing one-on-one -on -one, you know 5 10 15 is probably kind of near the max if you depending on how much time you spend with them so I think to me, it's really important to uh, to decide, you know, where you where you want to put your time and effort, how much time and effort you want to put into it, and then you have to go through the learning process. And the learning process is always painful for me because I have no clue how to use Photoshop. And then I look at it, and I stare at it, and I see all the buttons, and I, you know, three weeks later, I figure out how to actually open an image in Photoshop, you know, and then two weeks later, I figure out how to crop it. And then I figure out how to save it. And then, and then you know, in six months, or and I mean, it could be a week, but usually it's longer. I, I have no problem. Like, why did I have a problem before using this, right? So that's the down part is, is that it's always like Google Analytics. What is that? And then, yeah. you know, two months later, it's like, why did I think this was hard? Because we go through this learning process. And if you beat yourself up because you don't know how to use Dreamweaver, and you've never opened it before and you have no clue how to make a website why would you do that right so i think the hardest part of the journey for me was being gentle and saying you know mm, what mm. it takes certain amount of time to learn something and be good at it the frustrating part is i learned photoshop 10 years ago and and i use photoshop regularly so this doesn't apply to photoshop but if i hadn't used it for the last two years then i opened it up I would be starting all over again. And that happens to me all the time, where there's a program that I use once every six months and you have no clue how to do all the things I did six months ago on it because I don't use it over and over and over again. So I think I'm a little bit too much of a generalist. I'm trying, I'm doing my best to focus more, but even focusing more, I find that what I focus on has, you know, I, I focus on one thing and all of a sudden it explodes into 20 yeah. things, right? So being gentle with yourself and then understanding that there are frustrations that you're going to go through. And I love to hike in the mountains. So for me, it's like I want to go to the top of that hill. So <laughs> I, you know, it looks close, and then you walk along, and then you find out that there's a bunch of little hills before it, and you get to the next little hill, and you say, oh, like there's a swamp there. I don't want to go through that. So then you go around, and – and uh, and then you don't feel like you've made any progress. I've climbed Eras Rock in the center of Australia. It's the world's biggest pebble. It's like four miles around and a thousand feet high. And I can remember climbing up there once in, I was in my early 20s. And I'm like, it's hot. You know, it's the middle of the desert and the sun and it's noon, which I don't know why I was doing it at noon. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. Oh man, and all I see is the rock in front of me, right? Like, because it's about an angle like this. And I think, I haven't made any progress. And I turned around and I looked, and the car was like this big. Yeah. Like, I was like, whoa, I've come a long way. So the trick to the journey is to stop every once in a while, look behind, and say, wow, I know how to use this program and that program. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I have 10 clients that are great, or I have a million customers that love me, or whatever it is, and just like, celebrate those successes yeah that was another very interesting answer to um look at this uh kind of a situation because um what you're basically saying is that um 
the journey is always going to continue to be challenging because you're always going to continue to learn new things. And it's just hard for you to learn new things. And you and you don't there's no two ways about it. You don't get to just stay on this stuff that you already know. You're constantly having to learn new things. I'm not a Very. postal worker, right? Like the postal <laughs> worker is like, there's the 25 blocks you have to walk up and down every day. And you just got to make sure that the number on the piece of paper is the same as the number on the house. What do, what do they have to learn, right? Now, I'm sure that the postal worker is going to say, Scott, you have no clue, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I just saw one today and they're, I was like, wow, like what strong legs they had, right? They were in shorts and the the muscles were bulging. I thought, yeah, because this neighborhood I'm in is up and down and it's great exercise. But there's not, it's same with the carpenter, right? I mean, you may have small, hammering a nail is hammering a nail. Like there's just, it doesn't get any different. But the challenges that we have in the infopreneur field is not only are we kind of forced be, to learn, we, we are forced to learn because our competition is another infopreneur. So if he knows more than me, about something, then why would anyone talk to me? That guy's a lot better person to talk to. That guy's a lot better person to talk to. So you always are learning and you're always on the cutting edge, which means that you have to be comfortable with not knowing. Okay, uh, excellent. Um, so you've been doing this for quite a while now. So wrapping up with the, the last question here, I'm curious to see what type of an answer you would give to this. Because actually so far with all the questions I've asked you, the kind of answer that I've gotten is different than the way I would have answered that question. So let's see how you'll wrap up with the final question here. How would you rate your experience level as an infopreneur? I would rate it as phenomenal. So, but I don't know that... So what, you know, really, it's like, what do you, I think the important part is infopreneurship is an opportunity for you to be your own boss, to do what it is you want to do, to create an income. Like, there's no doubt that people that write books and do workshops and Udemy courses have money coming in, whether it's enough money for us to buy a $5 million yacht or not is a different question, or if it's this year or three years down the road, you know, depends on your goals in life. And I think that's where if you're going to be an infopreneur, you need to sit down and say, what do I want to accomplish in my life? Is my is one of my goals to go to New York and talk to, you know, 500 people about podcasting? Okay, done that. Is it to, you know, travel the world and explore the world? Or is it to be at home and raise my kids because, uh, you know, my dad went to work at five in the morning, came back at 10 at night, never saw him, you know, uh, like what? You need to really sort of look at your family. You need to look at your personal life. You need to look at your health and you need to dis your emotional needs, your mental needs and decide how do you want to balance them? How do you want to fulfill them? How do you want to be fulfilled? Most of us don't have to worry about a roof over our heads or whether we're going to have something to eat today or tomorrow or our security needs. So when those all those basic needs are looked after, it's our self-actualization needs that come across being needed, be, need to be looked after. And one of the reasons I think we have so many people with so many problems and dramas in their life is that they don't look after those needs. So, you know, we watch TV or we go to the movies or we do other things to numb our brains and we don't spend time doing what it is that really fulfills us. We're bored. So when you're an infopreneur, you're never bored. That's one thing. But you, you need to sit down and say, okay, what are the things that make my soul sing and I can't get it out of work because you can't. You need to balance your personal life and your business life and you need to do those things. For me, traveling, like I just spent 10 weeks. I was in Belize, Costa Rica, Honduras, yeah. Panama, Colombia. Uh, I was in Colombia for a month, actually two separate trips of two weeks. I love it down there, right? And I'm on a bus wandering through the countryside and it's like a local bus. I didn't mean to get on it, but I'm, some guy was going my direction and he spoke English. And so I glommed on to him because we were going to the same place and he got on this local bus and it went through all these areas that a local bus would go through that the tourist bus won't go through. Okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the trees and I'm looking at the people and I'm, we're passing through and my heart just opens up and it's singing. Like I just feel this joy for no reason except for the fact that I'm doing something that really 
I love. I don't know why I love that. Okay, it just happens, right? So, if you're not, if you're an infopreneur and you're not doing something that makes your heart sing, like if you sort of you're doing whatever you're doing, you're living life, and then you just stop for a second and you look at yourself mentally, right? And you go, "Oh man, like I am happy. I am fulfilled." That's the experience level you want to have as an infopreneur. And if you're not doing that and you're not stopping every once in a while and going, oh, my God, I've got the greatest life in the whole friggin' world. I would not change this for anything. Then you're not either far enough along the process because, of course, as I said before, when you begin, there's lots of frustration on every task uh, or you're doing totally the wrong things and you need to really evaluate it. So. In the beginning, I think, and I wish someone had told me this, is what sort of life do you want to live? And it's going to change. Like, Mark, you have young children, right? I've got a four-year-old on four in a few months. Yeah. yeah. My baby is 24 years old, and my other baby is 27 years old. Okay. So when they were like four years old, I didn't, I mean, Disneyland or something, yeah, okay, no problem. But I just wanted to be home with them. Right? I wanted to raise, that's the stage of life I was in. Once they were hitting 20s, uh, I'm divorced, and I'm thinking, I want to go spend a month in Hawaii. I want to go spend a month in Costa Rica. I want to spend a month in Italy. Like, I want to spend a month in Australia. That's what my brain was going. Right? So different stages of your life, you have different goals and different things that, like, my memories of when my kids were four are the best memories ever, Right. And, you know, and when they were five and six and seven, like all those memories are just absolutely incredible. I love them. And now it's so amazing to watch them be confident young men. That's great, too. But they're confident young men that don't need me around 24-7, yeah. which means and they don't really want to go spend a month in Australia. They're doing their own thing now. Right. Which is great. So that's what I want to do. I want to do the traveling. You might want to write a book or you might want to go into the desert or up a mountain or something else or, you know, whatever, or crafts or painting. Or, but I think it's really important that you think of what those things are and then try them out. You know, it may be like I might have hated traveling, but I went to Costa Rica and I might have hated it. Great. Well, now I know. That's not what it is, right? It's not a failure. It's an exploration of yourself. And I think that the whole experience of being an entrepreneur, uh, I keep wanting to say entrepreneur, infopreneur, <laughs> is the fact that you're actually exploring yourself and learning who you are and what's yeah. important. Okay. Yeah. And so let me um, maybe uh, just clarify a little bit here. More so what I was aiming at is like, how would you rate yourself in terms of like, from absolute beginner to absolute expert in oh. being an infopreneur? <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah, more on the expert land. Okay, great. It's, it's a good opportunity. We're going to have seven people on the show, one person each day, at least starting out. Maybe if it gets popular, we'll have more people. And I want the guests to have a sense of like, when I'm listening to Scott talking, I'm listening to somebody who is more on the expert level of, uh, of an infopreneur. And that'll just be good input for people to have yeah. to keep things in mind when they, when they, when we get to visit with you each week and find out how did your week go this past week and what do you got coming up in the next week for people to be able to just kind of keep that in their minds it's like oh and this is what it looks like for somebody who's really experienced at doing this stuff so it was great getting a chance to do this episode zero with you to get the whole introduction in place and the foundation in place and i look forward to talking with you in the weeks to come as we find out uh, what you've been doing in your part-time uh <laughs> work each week and and how things are going and to and to get that chance to see as well about some of the things that you're learning and the, and the successes and the failures that you continue to experience as you are uh walking this journey of info infopreneurship so Thank thanks you, for Mark. checking with me today scott and uh we'll look forward to to um taking the journey together thanks mark appreciate you Bye -bye.